Well, what's a hat without a pom-pom, honestly? Everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome to my little corner of the interwebs where I sit down every week and share what I've been making, primarily knitting. I also do a little sewing, quilting. I dive down many a different rabbit holes here on this channel. And today in particular, I'm gonna be revisiting another rabbit hole that I frequent here and there. Uh, so if that is your jam, gather around, grab a cup of something, and let's get into things. But first, I just wanna say a quick thank you so much to everybody who wished me a happy birthday. My birthday was this past Tuesday, and I did indeed turn the big 4-0. Yes, I am now part of Club 40, and feels so good to be here. <laughs> it's, it feels, you know, I'm not gonna lie, it does feel a little surreal because I personally feel like a perpetual five-year-old, <laughs> but you know age again age is just a number and you know I'm I enjoyed my 30s and I'm just really excited to see what the next decade of my life brings and I did skip a week of recording last week because Dennis and I we ended up doing something fun and spontaneous we true to form we just decided to do something special for my birthday hop on a plane and go to a little place called Puerto Rico and you know <laughs> I could not have asked for a better 40th birthday. It, the weather was beautiful, the sun was shining, it was just such a nice break from the cold winter that we've been having. We left on Friday and came back on my birthday on Tuesday, so most of my birthday was spent traveling. But the trip as a whole, I mean, goes without saying, made up for, for all of that. I'm not gonna talk about what Margaret the Mannequin's wearing today because she's wearing the same sweater she was wearing last week, or the week before when I did my uh, easy sweater knitting patterns for beginners. Um, I'll pop a link to that in the doobly-doo. I did receive a lot of great feedback on that episode, and yeah, I'm just so glad that you found it helpful Helpful, but I think that's it. So let's get into FOs. I do have an FO to share with you this week And if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen me post a photo of my FO for this project and that is The Oslo hat. It's done. Um, I don't think did I talk about this hat on the channel? I may have chatted about it on the Monday Waffle, which is a bonus vlog for channel members. Um, but yeah, this was a super quick knit, uh, and it really came down to me just wanting and needing a basic black hat to wear in the winter, and just something to go with everything. The Oslo hat is a pattern by Petite Knit, and it's just a very simple basic black beanie, and I added a pom-pom because all my hats need pom-poms. What's a hat without a pom-pom, honestly? Um, and the yarn is Ella Ray Cashmerino, is it sport? I believe it's, yeah, it's sport weight yarn, uh, which the pattern calls for. I didn't knit a gauge swatch for this, true to form. Um, I just kind of winged it and it fits. It fits really well. It might be, it might be a smidge snug, but I'm not complaining. I'll try it on for you. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's stretched out a little bit, so it's it just fits really nice and snugly around my head. And the cool thing about this hat is, well, first, the construction. Um, as I was knitting it, she has you do a technique where you knit like a long, long tube and then you fold it over to create a folded brim and then you start knitting reverse stockinette for a couple of centimeters or inches and then you re revert back to regular stockinette in the round. And what that does is it allows you, you know, there's a double fold right here, and then it folds up to create like three layers of fabric. So this, it's keeping this part of your head super warm, especially your ears. My ears are very, very sensitive when it comes to the cold and, um, you know, winter, at any time, even in the summer, if there's like a strong wind, if we're, for example, in Cape Cod, it gets really windy over there. If I don't have like a hoodie to protect my ears, I can't really explain it, but the wind just causes pain in the cartilage of my ear. And yeah, it's, it's quite painful. I've talked about this before and I know I'm not alone. This is just kind of like a thing that happens to certain people. It's like a sensitivity, or I think it's like the way that the ear canal is angled. I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but yeah, I really appreciate that this has trifold happening here. And this is what it looks like from the side. So slouchy, it, ju it just ticks all the boxes. Um, 
but yeah, the, even though this is the mohair edition, uh, I opted not to use mohair in this. I just went for a straight on sport weight yarn. Um, again, it's Ella Ray Cash Merino. So there's um, obviously some merino in there and cashmere content. And it's just this really lovely, lovely soft black hat. I love it, guys. Um, I'll try and hopefully you can see some of the stitch def definition in here, but um, I will unfold this so you can see. Uh, yeah. So you can see it's just a very interesting construction. Um, this is the part where the fold is joined to the cast on edge. And then here she has you do um, the reverse stockinette and continue on into stockinette in the round. And the reason that she has you do this is because when you fold it over, it gives you a little buffer. So when it is folded over, you don't see any garter stitch on, on the fold side. So anyway, I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, just a really quick, simple knit. Uh, I, this has obviously been getting a lot of wear for me and yeah, so glad that I, I whipped one up. Um, I could definitely see myself knitting one in like a camel color lately. Lately, my friends, I've been gravitating towards neutrals. I mean, don't tell mauve, but but lately I've just been gravitating towards blacks and tans. And I I love I love neutral shades. I you know, with with a pop of color here and there. So yeah, mauve is definitely my color. Mauve and green and grays are, you know, still my jam, so don't worry, they're not going anywhere, but you may see a lot of, you know, blacks and tans working their way into my knitting or, you know, whatever crafts that I'm working on. Uh, so yeah, that was the Oslo hat by Petite Knit. Uh, also by Petite Knit is a work in progress. Uh, it's on the floor, why? I don't know why, but my no frills pullover it's so close to being done, my friends. And I cast this on using my hand-dyed yarns, Volan Vine Yarns, holding a strand of Volca, which is my Merino Nylon Cashmere Fingering Weight Blend, together with Ghost Lace, which is a lace weight silk and mohair blend. Uh, lace weight, obviously. And it's just creating this really beautiful, fluffy, bespeckled fabric, and I absolutely love it. Lately, I'm gravitating towards neutrals and very simple relaxing knits lately. I'm, you know, while I do love a good challenge when it comes to knitting, um, lately I just, I just want to cast on and go. I don't want to be fussed about, you know, memorizing a stitch. I just, I like the plain and simple these days. And I don't think that's a bad thing, you know, because knitting is supposed to be relaxing and this pattern is certainly no exception. It's just been knitting plain, pure stockinette in the round. And I, I'm very happy about that. Um, so I'll stand up so you can see so far. And yeah, we have one sleeve done and then just about done with the second sleeve. And yeah, for some reason, again, this sleeve took felt like it took forever and a day to finish, but the second sleeve is just zooming by. It probably helped that I spent most of yesterday working on this. Um, yeah, again, we came back from vacation on Tuesday and yesterday I, I did package orders, but I decided I wasn't going to dye any yarn. I was just going to relax, recoup and get some knitting done. And that's exactly what I did. And we, this, this is the fruits of my decision. <laughs> but the one issue that I did run into while knitting this pattern is that my yarn started pooling, which again, this is a normal occurrence with all hand dyed yarns. Sometimes you luck out and get skeins that just knit up beautifully without any pooling, but sometimes when it comes to speckles and variegated yarns, you're you're gonna get some pooling. And if that's not something that you're into and want to prevent, then you have to whip out a little technique called alternating skeins, or in my case, I used a technique called helical knitting. It's a really clever technique that kind of uh, blends two skeins to, of yarn together and it kind of stretches out the pooling so it's not as obvious. Um, I will stand up so you can probably see. Yeah, you can see right here, there's a little faint pooling happening but because I alternated skeins, it kind of stretches out the pooling. So it's not as obvious and you know, it's still there, but honestly, it's, it does not bother me. And um, I'm just really excited to have this in my wardrobe and give it lots of love once it's done. But I think, I think I'm going to be done with this either today or tomorrow. And by next week, I should have enough O to share with you. And guys, I don't know <laughs> I, I, if you're wondering what's going on with my hair, like this side, it feels a little more curly than this side. Uh, that's because I just got a new curling iron. It's one of those flat irons with a round barrel. And there, it's definitely got a learning curve. I'm good at getting the curl on one side, but the other side, not so much. There's 
I'm still practicing, but in case you're wondering what's happening, yeah, that's what's happening. Um, little crazy hair today, but we're rolling with it. We're going with it. Uh, next up uh, is not knitting related. That was all the knitting related content that I had to share with you. But as I teased in the intro, um, I am once again diving down the rabbit hole of crochet. Yes, we are going there again. And guys, I, this time, this time I'm kind of going hard on it. I don't, it's, I can't explain it. I just woke up one day saying, you know what? I really want to give crochet another try again. I know how to crochet. I know the basics. I know the basic stitches, but there are certain patterns when I'm browsing Ravelry that I'm just like, why can't I do that? I really want to learn how to do those 3D textured stitches that they just look so cool. Um, there's a part of me that really just wants to deep dive into crochet and see what it's all about. Like the, the really technical stuff, you know, am, am I making any sense? Um, so that's what I did. I woke up one day and just started noodling around. I downloaded a free pattern on Ravelry and just started playing with textured stitches. And once I got it, I was like, okay, all right. I've, I think, I think I got the gist of this and just started you know, going on YouTube and watching all the tutorials. This is what I do. I just, when I get excited about something, I go hard on it <laughs> and I do all the research. I just watch all the YouTube tutorials and I ended up stumbling on TL Yarn Crafts. Or if, if you are not familiar with Tony Lipsy, get out from under thy log because she is, she is truly the queen of crochet in my humble opinion. Um, I've, I've been following her on Instagram and on YouTube, but because I don't really crochet, I only checked out her channel for, you know, the odd tutorial that I needed to figure out or something. Um, but once I decided that I, I really want to get this whole crochet thing, I, I just binged her channel and my goodness guys, she, what, what a gift. I mean, Tony, her personality is just, I can't get enough of her. Her energy, she's just like a ball of sunshine that I just so look forward to catching up with now on my YouTube feed. And yeah, if, again, like if you're not familiar with uh, Tony's YouTube channel, it's called TL Yarn Crafts. Her channel is all about crochet and in binge watching it, she introduced me to the wonderful world of Tunisian crochet, which is a craft that I had never heard of before until I started watching her channel. And Oh my goodness, what a rabbit hole indeed, because I ended up treating myself, you know, just watching her do it and using the tools and everything. I was like, let me add it. I need, I need to, I need to try this craft. So I started browsing Amazon for a Tunisian crochet hook set. And in hindsight, I probably should have started out with a relatively inexpensive set. They have plenty of very inexpensive budget-friendly Tunisian crochet hooks, uh, crochet hook sets available to, to purchase on there, but I stumbled on one by Lantern Moon and could not help myself. I, I basically used my birthday as an excuse because these are absolutely beautiful. And they don't come with many, I mean, they come with one, two, three, six, six crochet hooks total. Um, but these, this is what it looks like on the inside. And this is what one of them looks like. How beautiful are these guys? Um, yeah, they, they just, completely bogarted my heart when I saw them and I, I, I added to cart, shipped to Kristen. And they do come with, they do come with a key, little key and some end stops right there. And they come with two cable cords. So um, you're, pr let me see if I can hold this. Tunisian crochet is kind of like a combination of crochet and knitting. If you're familiar with regular crochet, you're always working with that one loop. Except with Tunisian crochet, you're still working with a crochet hook, but a longer hook to accommodate more stitches, if that makes any sense. And to better help illustrate what I'm talking about, I'm going to show you this recent cast on, uh, the Lumia Wrap, Lamia Wrap, I'm sorry, by Tony Lipsy, who is the host of TL Yarn Crafts. Um, but as you can see, it's you know, all of my stitches are on this long cable. So it could either be a long cable or a long needle, but in this case, it's a long cable with a stopper at the end. And I have to say, this pattern is the perfect 
Tunisian crochet boot camp that I needed to get the gist of it. Um, although, you know, I will say when I did first try Tunisian crochet out, I, I pretty, I, I picked it up pretty quickly. Um, it's not that hard to wrap your brain around and it's actually really addicting. The one thing that I was struggling with were my ends. So like picking up the stitches along the, the beginning of the row and the end of the row. The middle was, you know, it is usually a piece of cake, but it's just recognizing those, those stitches at the edges that I was struggling with. And this pattern in particular helped me with that. I mean, just knitting row after row after row, allowing myself to make mistakes, ripping back. Um, I finally got the gist of it. And yeah, I'm, as you can see, like my edges, the top here, they're, they're getting, they're improving. Uh, and so is my, my tension and everything. I'm just so completely wowed by it because it creates this really unique texture that I don't think you can really achieve with regular crochet or knitting. It looks complicated, but they're really simple and intuitive stitches. I think it got to the point where I was here and I didn't have to refer to the pattern anymore. I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. Um, which is another thing I should mention with Tunisian crochet, you're always, um, you're never turning your work. There's only a forward pass and a backward pass on the right side of your work. Tunisian crochet, man. I, I'm having so much fun with this. I am addicted and yeah, I, I'm very much indulging this infatuation with crochet right now. So much so that that's not the only thing that I've been working on. Believe it or not, this is the very first vacation that I have not taken any knitting with me. I only brought crochet because I really just kind of wanted to go hard on it. For some reason, I really just want to hone my crochet skills and I figured if I don't bring any knitting with me, I won't be tempted to, you know, let it fall to the wayside. But to be honest, I could not put this stuff down. I did bring another project with me uh, in, case, in case I wanted to switch things up a little bit. So I brought my Lamia wrap that is a an active work in progress, but I also downloaded a book called Crochet Tiles by Sarah Collard. The stitches in this book were just calling out to me. They were so beautiful. I figured I'd bring a couple of colors of cotton yarn with me and some crochet hooks and just go ham on, on the granny squares and learn new stitches because these, uh, these granny squares in particular, they do incorporate textured stitches, not just your average, um, you know, double crochet, single crochet. It, it goes beyond that. And if you follow my Instagram stories, I did post that I was working on these on, on the balcony at our hotel and on the plane ride back to New York. And I, you know, yeah, I've been... I've been a busy lady, my friends. Uh, I, only, I only crocheted three. I'm just about done with the third one, but uh, these squares are just so fun and beautiful to look at. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna crochet a whole afghan out of this. I mean, I'm just noodling around and practicing and honing my skills at this point, but um, these are super addicting to make, and I think I'm just gonna make like a nice little placemat for our dining room table. Um, yeah, because we have like a little centerpiece on there that I might, you know, this might be a nice little decorative piece to put there. Um, but yeah, you can see that it has a lot of texture, it has these little clusters happening, uh, these little, you know, you have to go down to previous rows to pull up the, the yarn, and yeah, it's just scratching that itch in my brain that I, you know, I'm all about. Um, and again, yeah, this is, the book is called Crochet Tiles by Sarah Collard, and there are so many granny square patterns to be had in there. Uh, I'll pop a link to it down in the description box if you wanna check it out yourself. I downloaded the digital version, but I'm very, very tempted to get the, the physical copy just because I feel like I'm gonna be referring, referring back to it every now and again. Um, but you know, after making a bunch of these, I'm finally getting the gist of it, of crochet. It doesn't seem like, it doesn't feel like sorcery to me anymore or difficult. It's just, I'm, you know, again, practice, practice, practice makes perfect. The other thing that I like about this book is that it also comes with, it comes with written directions and then it also comes with charts as well, which is something that I do struggle with when it comes to crochet, um, reading crochet charts and I, you know, when it comes to knitting, I am all about charts. I know there are people that are all about the written instructions and there are people that are all about the, the charts. I am a chart reader and I am so determined to understand how to learn, it, how, to, how to read a crochet chart and I'm getting there. It's all, yeah, it's all making sense now. Um, so yeah, that has been my foray into crochet. Oh God, that rhymed. Totally didn't intend for that, um, but I am, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So, you know, 
I know I have some knitting projects that need finishing, but but if you've been watching this channel for a while now, you know that once I fall down a rabbit hole, there's there's no stopping me. I, I go hard on it. Um, so that's what's happening now. Crochet. Crochet all day. Uh, yes. And I should probably talk about the yarn for my Lamia wrap, by the way. So, oh, well, yeah, okay, we'll talk about the yarn for my Lamia wrap. Lamia wrap, I hopped on over to my local yarn shop, the Nimble Thimble, and picked up three skeins of Cascade 220 Aran weight. And it's in this beautiful, neutral, just, you know, tan, I want to say. Like a grayish, grayish taupe, I want to say. Again, I'm going hard on the neutrals lately, and I'm completely here for it. I would have gone stash diving, but to be honest, I don't think I have any Aran weight in my stash. So, you know, I just went over to my local yarn shop, picked up three skeins of this. Uh, you know, it was on sale, so, you know, it was a win-win. And, you know, it was for my first Tunisian crochet project, I thought it was the perfect situation. So working with that, and it's, it's so soft and versatile, I, you know... I love Cascade 220. It's such a great workhorse yarn. And yeah, it's crocheting. I almost said knitting. But it's crocheting up so beautifully. I mean, look at that texture. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that was that yarn. And then for my granny squares, I'm using uh, Shepia's Katona, which is a fingering weight, 100% uh, mercenized cotton. So this is not one of the colors that I'm using, but uh, just to give you an idea. And yeah, just really, really nice uh, cotton yarn to work with. It feels incredibly soft and a delight to work with. So yay, that I believe is all the creative content that I have to share with you today, my friends. Thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. If you're new here and haven't already, feel free to like and subscribe down below. I'm putting out videos for your viewing pleasure on a regular basis and if you would like to support this channel and the work that I do here, you can do so by becoming a member. Just click the join button down below this video or on the main channel page. And for the price of a monthly fancy schmancy cup of coffee, depending which tier you pick, you can unlock some bonus features, bonus content from yours truly. Uh, we do have the Monday Waffle, which is a very, very casual weekly vlog that I put out for channel members just talking about what's top of mind, what I got up to over the weekend, life-wise, creative-wise. Um, just, you know, a waffle, a random waffle, if you will. Uh, and then we also have our private Facebook group, which is a really fun place to be uh, and connect with other members of this channel. And that said, have an amazing rest of your week, have an awesome weekend, and I will see you next time. Bye!